Why do you think that hyperbaric oxygen therapy is so underutilized and misunderstood? That's the question I've been asking for <laughs> over a decade. Yeah. I think part of it is that, and this is unfortunate truth in medicine, there's, there's just not a lot of money in it. You mm-hmm. can't patent it. You can't make a right. new drug that uses it. Right. When there's something that we can't patent and we can't put so much, you know, so much money behind, mm-hmm. there's, the research starts to dwindle. As the research starts to dwindle, people kind of just forget about it. And so, you know, I think oxygen is just such an obvious, you know, I look at it as a nutrient. So it's like this obvious nutrient. We all know we need it. Mm -hmm. Anyone who questions that, just hold your breath and see how long you can go without replenishing the oxygen in your body. Mm -hmm. And so we know how important it is, but it's almost like unless you have a heart disease or lung disease, we just assume that we can't get any more than what we're getting right now. And so we just we just sort of ignore it, you know. Mm-hmm. Instead, if we just spent that time and really actually thought about how could you get more oxygen, and if you could, what would your body do with it, and then start to apply a therapy like this more often, uh, we would see so many people with so many chronic, especially chronic ailments that have no other choices out there in the healthcare model, you know, they would finally find the relief that they're looking for. And we see that in our clinic. We see that in the clinics that we support all over the country. Hyperbaric is an amazing tool. And all it's really doing is providing the body with more oxygen than it could normally get. Well, case in point with my friend, it saved her life. Uh, She went through 30 days of hyperbaric therapy and 48 rounds of radiation, which they would never do now, but they did that years ago. Uh, But she, uh, you know, went, I think she did the hyperbaric chamber uh, therapy uh, here in Dallas at Baylor Hospital. And, uh, and, you know, it was very, it was very difficult on her, but it saved her life. You know, she's very thankful that the therapy existed, but you know, that's the thing, you know, you ask the question, why, you know, why is it so under, underutilized and misunderstood? And I think you nailed it. You know, it's because it heals people, it saves lives and it's not, uh, it's, it's not expensive. And so, which is very um, unfortunate because we all want to live a, a beautiful, healthy life, right? And live as long as we can to be there with, for our children and our, our grandchildren or just to enjoy life. Uh, period. So, yeah, it is. It's 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 very discouraging. Uh, but but I do feel like it's coming. Like there's a there's a movement for hyperbaric treatment. Uh, you know, this whole movement of alternative and holistic health. People are addressing therapies like this, and they're getting finally. I feel the respect and uh, accolades that they deserve. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen. So we've been doing hyperbaric in our office for almost 15 years, and I would say in the last five years, but really in the last two years and even more in the last year, you know, we have seen a huge increase in patient awareness Mm -hmm. and patient interest, you know, people looking for natural solutions to whatever their issues are, or, you know, even natural solutions, they don't have any issues, they just don't want any issues. And Mm -hmm. so they're looking for ways of not just maintaining, but improving their overall health for Mm -hmm. the long haul, recognizing that, hey, listen, if you're not actively improving your health day to day, then you're, you're losing your health. And so, you know, what are the different types of modalities that we can all be optimizing our biology with on a regular basis to improve our quality of life for the years that we have? And, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the hyperbaric component has been growing so much recently. And, yeah. and even in the, in the classes that I teach, we're selling those classes out literally every course where years ago we'd have classes and people would come, but it wasn't like, you know, selling out and waiting mm-hmm. list. The, these classes are really expanding a great deal. And that's just because so many more people are wanting to get involved because they see how much it helps their patients. And they really want to offer something that's meaningful to, to the people that they treat. I hope one day that we'll get to a, a point where allopathic and natural or alternative health or holistic health, whatever you want to call it, that those two will come together and use the best tools in each of those toolboxes in order to help people heal from disease or, like you say, prevent it in the first place through nutrition right. or nutrition and exercise, right? All these things that we know uh, keep our bodies healthy and keep, keep them well. And I think it's important in your practice. I know that you do that. You know, you educate people, not just educate and then use your own personal experience from handling certain conditions and using certain modalities to to bring the best outcome to your patients. Absolutely. You know, I think what I think where we went wrong was as the natural healthcare movement continued to grow, and this is years ago already, but Mm -hmm. it became almost like an either or, right? And the either or mentality became, Mm -hmm. you know, created competitiveness. And because Mm -hmm. of that, there was a less of a let's say, utilization of more natural modalities from the Mm -hmm. allopathic world. Mm -hmm. 
And really, it should never have been either or. What it should be is, listen, you're, you're healthy. You want to be healthy. You want to maintain your health. Here are all the things you can do to try to actively avoid, you know, falling victim to all these varieties of lifestyle diseases and chronic inflammatory diseases. And as you start to see that you're not staying ahead of it and these things might be building up in your body, here's a handful of natural remedies and things that you can do to try to Mm -hmm. either reverse that process or slow that process. And God forbid, if it goes too long, too far, we have an entire world of allopathic medicine willing and able to help you. But what we did was we created an environment where people either sort of, quote unquote, believe in natural medicine or not. And it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not a religion. It's not something we believe right. in or not. It's, it's something that works. Yeah. The question is, where did we place it? Did we wait too long? Did we wait mm-hmm. till this disease progressed so far that now these natural remedies aren't going to work anymore? Because somebody didn't tell you earlier that you could have been doing something to help prevent or maintain or improve your health before mm-hmm. you crossed you know, this imaginary line where those therapies may not help anymore. And so if we all just always worked together, and I'm hoping that that's the direction we're moving, if we all work together, if the, if the goal of every doctor was really patient-centered care, and we saw somebody say, hey, you know, your blood sugar is getting high, instead of, you know, hey, just watch it, or, mm-hmm. you know, be careful, you might get diabetes, see you next year, here are some steps you can take so that next year you're in a healthier place, Right. right. If right. we all just work together with that mindset of prevention and improved health, for some people, that'll save their life. And for other people, it might delay, you know, whatever road mm-hmm. that they happen to be on. It's not like you have to either choose to choose, you know, natural health care or allopathic health care. It's a continuum. Yeah. And we need to look at it that way and treat patients that way, I think, to get the best results. You know, I love in your book that you write that the purpose of your book, of this book is to help recenter our focus as healthcare practitioners. Besides taking our oath, we have a moral and ethical obligation to tell the truth, to help improve the health of our patients, and to guide them through tough choices by giving them the absolute most reliable information we have at the time, that doctor means teacher, uh, by definition. I, I love that you write that. This book has so much valuable information in it. I'm so glad you wrote it. <laughs> How long did it take you? I'm so glad you read it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> How long did it take uh, you to it write took, it? It took about three months. I had some help and guidance in terms of how to stay focused on that. But I really, you know, I felt really passionate that this book uh, needed to reach. Originally, I was writing it only for doctors. And then I realized that so much of the information is would be valuable, not only to a healthcare provider, but a healthcare consumer. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I had to, you know, just change it a little bit just to make sure that literally anyone who could pick it up could understand it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted people to, you know, yes, it's about hyperbaric oxygen. Yes, I think hyperbaric is a critical tool in the big scheme of helping so many patients deal mm-hmm. with chronic illness and mm-hmm. or, you know, these folks that are healthy looking for improved quality of life and longevity. But I also wanted to put all these other pieces that you're bringing up, which is really reevaluating the entire thought process, the paradigm by which we've been treating patients for all these years, Mm -hmm. and to really help people understand the bigger picture and how to zoom out. You know, we wouldn't know so much about in, in medicine if we didn't specialize in liver and immune system and heart and lungs. You know, the specialization in healthcare has really allowed us to understand every organ at a level that we could never have understood them if we didn't choose to specialize that way. At the same time, because of all of that specialization, we've lost the, you know, the family doctor that just yeah. knows you inside yeah. out and backwards, knows your whole family. Knows, you know, and, and that thought process, that part of doctoring, that was where the art form was. And when you could know somebody and know their history and know their family history at that level, when you could know their lifestyle and their choices, and you you are so intimate with your patient relationships, your ability to predict health or help people, you know, it was it was a it was actually a far greater level knowing people that well. Mm-hmm. And now we've gotten into these algorithms and these flow charts, and you know we've specialized in in these organs that. We've lost that that art. And, you know, part of this book is to help hopefully, you know, jog the passion. You know, when we any I believe that any doctor that went into into medicine, they did it because they wanted to truly help people. Mm -hmm. We've created such a mechanistic thought process around it that we've lost the patient care model and that paradigm. And and I hope that this book just helps kind of reawaken that for, for the people who get a chance to read it.